What's up, everybody? It is I am Monique Wilson here, and now you are tuned in with Unplugged DMV. Welcome to another episode of Unplugged DMV. I am Tania Dene, and today we have the singer and songwriter Monique Wilson. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am doing good in yourself. I always love when we can have a beautiful female artist in the building. Stop. Because we have to represent. <laughs> Stop. We have to represent. So let's do some background work first, okay? okay? So tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, where you're from. I am 21 years old. 21? Yeah. Did you think something different? No, okay. <laughs> 21. No, I didn't think anything oh, there. Uh, because people, I had one person when I was doing an interview with, he was like, you look 16. And I was like, no. Well, that's a compliment. So <laughs> so we love that. That's too, a compliment. But. Too young. Um, I'm from Baltimore, but I'm from the county. Mm -hmm. So I started music when I was six years old. I have a lot of musical background in my family. My grandfather, my great-grandmother, my father and um, my cousins and stuff like that. Um, they both, they made, they, <laughs> they basically did a lot of gospel music and stuff, mm -hmm. but I guess that's where it grew from. Um, I got deep into doing music when I was uh, maybe 18, going into college. I thought to myself, okay, this is what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. So now I kind of need to get the grounds running or, or get, like, get started with it. So, right. Yeah, I've been doing this for quite some time, but I mm -hmm. took it serious a couple of years ago. Yeah, so with you, um, you know, starting out singing and your family coming from that background, mm -hmm. did you um, used to like sing in church and everything as well? Or? No, because I no. always had stage fright. Really? So I never sang in church, but I did sing at other places. Mm -hmm. um, my first performance was <laughs> was when I was I, I was in. I think date, not daycare. It was it was summer camp, mm -hmm. and we all did something musical. So my first song was, uh, you know, the song of Mary J. Blige. I'm gonna change my life. Mm -hmm. That song. So I did Just that fine. song. Yes, mm -hmm. that song. That was my very first performance, and uh, um, I never really sang in church before because mm -hmm. it was I get scared of big crowds. Really. But I'm trying to mm -hmm. get over it. So because if I want to do it, I'm gonna have to overcome it. So I'm taking right. baby steps with it. Yeah. Taking baby steps. And that's okay. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> so and you know you know they have a lot of classes for that they as do. well. So you know would you be open to taking you know certain classes and lessons or getting like a mentor um, or? Well, I have a mentor. Mm -hmm. I got two mentors. Um, classes as far as getting over my stage fright, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will pay for it if I have to. <laughs> yes. Well, um, just so you know, I think you're amazing. I don't think you're, you're scared. I don't think you have stage fright. Really? It's just the jitters of <laughs> knowing is. that you're about to kill it is what it you is. go through, right? Yes. Yeah. So how would you say, like, you know, your family and friends were supportive of you um, as you started to tap into the music industry? They were very supportive. My mother, she was just like, she knew from the get-go when I was little that I didn't want to, I didn't want to be a singer. So mm -hmm. she was literally like the first one in my corner. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess when I started with my first single, with my performances before I put out the single, to my EP, to everything I wanted to do, she was literally the main person in my corner. And you know, I had my friends and my family and stuff like that. Um, I had mm -hmm. a lot of good people in my corner. Granted, I had some people who I thought supported me, but yeah. I really didn't pay attention to them mm -hmm. because I now have a good group of, a good healthy group of people, family, friends, people in the music industry, people that are really far in the music industry that really does support me in what I do. So yeah. it's great. It's really yeah. great. And um, so I want to I wanna tap into um, your mom and the support, and I definitely want to get oh, into... Mom also um outgrowing the people that aren't you know because you know there's a saying you can't take everybody with you where yes. you're going yes. so you know i know it kind of um it hurts a lot of people as you're growing and evolving you know within your passion and things like that so can you tell me about you know different instances where you had some ups and downs you know as far as the knowing that there was a shift change in your friend circle or your support circle. <laughs> well, I can speak on it now because I'm over it. Um, right. And how you overcame it, because yeah, that's the most important part. I did. It took a lot of healing, number one. It took a lot of healing, a lot of work, a lot, a lot of inner workings that I had to do. Um, 
I had a best friend and me and her, we were really close. And later on down the line, when the pandemic hit, that's when mm -hmm. stuff started to really change. I recently got over a friend and me and her bumped heads a lot, but I could just tell she wasn't really supportive in yeah. the end either. I have some family members mm -hmm. too, small family members that I could see that they don't really support me, yeah. but I kind of just don't speak on it because right. like, you know what, that's mm -hmm. okay. As long because as I got the right people in my family yeah. or the right people in my corner, that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I overcame it because it's like, you know, like you said, not everyone is going to go to the top with you. Mm -hmm. And it's all about evolving. Yeah. So I know that these people are flaking out of nowhere it's because I'm about to evolve into something better. I'm about to do speak, bigger yeah. things mm -hmm. that they cannot just come with me to. Yeah. And that's, and I've learned that that's okay. It's not my job to understand why. It's just my job to take what's ever in my control and make something beautiful out of it mm -hmm. and just keep going. Yeah. And I, d I just want to say for the record, okay, I asked that question not to cause any drama or anything like that but because there are so many entrepreneurs so many artists who struggle with yeah. you know the people that they started with not supporting or yeah. you know just growing apart from those people and so they need people like you who have experienced it or yeah. people like us I should say because I have as well mm -hmm. to give them you know a word of advice and drop some gems and let us know yeah. how we can all overcome everything yeah. you yeah. know so let's tap into um, your mom supporting you being <laughs> Your biggest support is so she is she a momager? Is she yes. your manager? Momager, <laughs> manager. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, she's she's all of that into one. She mm -hmm. she don't play about me and my music. She don't play about anything that I do. Granted, mm -hmm. we bump heads, but I know that if, if I need something if I need help, she's she gonna give me that look like mm -hmm. <laughs> why did I do me like that? But then she'll just help me. Um she helped me open a lot of doors when I was struggling with my depression and my music. She was the main one I could really call on mm -hmm. to to help me, you know, tell myself that I got this. God gave me this gift for a reason. You're mm -hmm. here for a reason. So you just got to get up and running because life is not going to stop for you. So yeah. she'll, she'll, be, she'll keep it real with me, but she'll also come for me because my mother is the type to keep it real. Like, we need blunt people. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that I have a mom who just tells me how it yeah. is, no cut corners, but mm -hmm. then also, you know, gives me that comfort and love that I need. But mm -hmm. she's been with me through a lot. Yeah. Obviously, she's... For my first performance, I was really, really nervous, but I, I paid attention, but I saw her, you know, with the cameras and moving <laughs> and her pushing people out the way so she could get the right angles. She don't care who's there. She's going to get pictures of me. Um, <laughs> up until making my first song, she was blasting in the car for weeks. I was like, Mom, can you please stop blasting I know that's, that I know that's right. Shout stop out to Monique's mom. She, can you please stop blasting that in the car? She was like, no, because I'm going to keep blasting it. I rolled down the hood, and they're going to like it because it's my baby. And I was like, can, what can you do when I'm not in the car? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, she was with me when I was studying, when I'm still like in school and studying music and stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been with me with my EP. She was the first person that post my stuff on Facebook, Instagram, you name it. She's done it. Yeah. Um, when I had my podcast, she was up and running with that as well. She was definitely deep in my corner with that. So. Yeah. It has yeah. to be such a beautiful thing, right? It to have is. someone so supportive it of is. you. It, it and you really know she is. has your best interest yes. at heart. Yeah. Yes. So um, tell us a little bit. I want to tap more into um, your songwriting. So when did you start writing music? Was it before you started singing? Um, it was... Uh, I'm 21 now. I started when I was maybe 17 or 18. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't take any songwriting classes or anything of that matter. Um, I basically just how other artists do just go based off of how I feel. Mm -hmm. And I've learned over time to stop cutting corners or stop limiting myself because right. I'm afraid of how people feel. Because honestly, forget them. This is my music and this is just how I feel. And that's okay. Um, it was very easy for me as well. Some people didn't like it. Some pe a lot of people, a lot more people did like it. Um, I remember when I wrote my EP, I was staying up for hours, trying to mm -hmm. like two, two, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, trying mm -hmm. to figure out what fits me most. And um, 
Yeah. It's not really that much for mm-hmm. me. It, it's usually, like, first I come up with a tune and stuff, and then I just start writing down how I feel. Right. And then that's just the end of that. Yeah. You ever see yourself writing any music for other artists, or? I could try. You know, being, like, a ghostwriter person. Like, Neo? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe. you know, they make out. They you know? do. <laughs> they do. So, I'm, I'm, maybe. Mm-hmm. I think about that. It, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Are there any things that you've learned um, tapping into coming into the music industry? Is there anything that you wish you would have known before? Not everyone is going to be in your corner. Mm-hmm. Not everyone is going to have the best interest at heart. Mm-hmm. People will try and make you into something that you're just not made to be. Um, I wish I would have learned that it's a lot more work than what it looks like on TV of how to actually get where you want to be. It's not all glitz and glamour. It's not mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm going to make this song today, and boom, I'm going to be Beyonce tomorrow. Like, right. It's not nothing like that. It takes a lot of hard work, a lot of, a lot of time, because faith without work is dead. It takes a lot of growth, actually, as well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it can get draining. I remember times when I was mentally drained mm-hmm. from doing music as a whole you have to have a really tight people in your corner in order to make out because if not you're gonna fall right who give me two artists who inspired you you can do um one male and one female her uh, oh yeah yes her yes. everyone knows i love her mm-hmm. everyone knows this <laughs> she's I she's love amazing <laughs> i love her i can go on and on <laughs> Her and one male artist, it's between Gibeon and Lucky Day. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Those are good choices. So they're who inspired you to um, get into music and, you know, pursue it as your passion? Um, Her mostly did Mm -hmm. because I was listening to her since high school and it was just her flow and Mm -hmm. how she's just so how her, her lyrics are and how she just, she talks about everything and just she ate and left no crumbs like she like like she (laughs) and she started off super young yes like she started off super Mm -hmm. duper young and how she just came up and how positive and how honest she is about her music and how she she, i can relate to her it's 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 very few artists that i can relate to but Mm -hmm. i can i can definitely relate to her and her music so she's a number one factor yeah that's dope so early i heard you mention your podcast so tell us a little bit about your podcast what was the name of it and you know what was the purpose of your podcast i had a podcast named rhythm and muse it started in march mm-hmm. um this guy that i interviewed with charm city direct tv shout out to charm city direct tv um he gave me the idea to do a podcast about artists you know just like you mm-hmm. artists in the dmv so it wasn't in person because we were still deep in quarantine and stuff right. like that, but it was online. So um, it took a month to put together with the help of my mom and my mentor and a lot of different people in my circle. Um, after after a month, after getting everything straight, after spending long nights working on segments and trying to figure out what questions to ask and what else to include in the podcast. I say at least in April, that's when it was up and running. Mm-hmm. It was good for a while because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people don't have that many um, advantages here in Baltimore. Right. Yeah. So I, it felt good that I could talk to people, or people could talk to me about anything in regards to that music without no type of cut corners like you can just say anything you want to say this is even though this is my show this is your show too so whatever you want to get out there we can just get out there so it it was it was really good for the time being Mm -hmm. i really enjoyed it it kind of grew on me Mm -hmm. why did you stop (sighs) personal reasons Mm -hmm. technical reasons it was a lot hopefully sooner or later it'll I'll be able to do it again for a season two. So mm-hmm. I'm just hoping and praying. But yeah. it was good for the time being. Oh, we look forward to listening to your Thank podcast you. once Thank you relaunch. You. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, so um, I also heard you mention you have a mentor. So tell me about that process. What made you go seek out a mentor? Well, a lot of people don't know that I am with Grammy U. Mm-hmm. So if, yes, if and like, explain what, what the Grammy yes, U is. A lot of, Grammy U is is with the recording academy so as you guys as as you may know it's it's already big from how it sounds Mm -hmm. i found it through this college i was looking at in philly and uh, for grammy u it's for people in school 
they are able to meet with people in the industry already. So mm -hmm. I'm with the DC chapter because there's not one in Baltimore. So, you know, there's a DC chapter. So I was first, I was just, you know, a Grammy U person. I was just there for the uh, the panels. I've spoken to Lettucey, Jacquees. I've got to sit with Smokey Robinson, the one and only Patti LaBelle. I've mm -hmm. sat with different uh, mix, mixers and masters in the uh, Tyler Prax. You I, sat with Smokey. I didn't sit with, listen. You sat with Smokey? No, but. Uh -huh. um, I love me some Smokey Brown. It was, <laughs> um, it was on a webcam, basically. Okay. And he would That's answer the questions thing. in the chat. That's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he would answer questions in the chat for us. Mm -hmm. And my questions got picked. I forgot what the question was, but he answered it. Mm -hmm. And when I told my mom, I saw Lettucey, because I was like, you know, just, I, I didn't know who you she didn't was. Know she, I was just like, <laughs> she was like, oh, who just you speak to? You know, just speaking of Lettucey. She was like, the Lettucey? And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, mom. Yeah. I, I, I love your mother. <laughs> yeah. What, who, what? Uh, she she went in my room and she took a picture mm -hmm. of my laptop. And she was like, my baby is speaking of Lettucey. <laughs> and I was just like, okay. So then I looked her up and I was like, oh. Oh, it's all coming together. Right. So yeah, she was mad at me see. because I was not surprised at all. Um, <laughs> my mentor is um, a woman named um, Monet. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Monet if you're watching or will you will watch. Um, she is my mentor. She went to the school I want to go to, the University of the Arts. Um, she's been on tour with Vivian Green, mm -hmm. and she recently just came back. And she's from Baltimore as well. So I was okay. like, okay, this is very, like, this is a small world, you know? Yeah. So we, her and I were talking, and she's the one, she's also helped me with my podcast as well. She mm -hmm. and I were talking. She's very, very good. She gives me a lot of good advice. She can give me, I know that she can get me places, mm -hmm. but she can have people reach out to me or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I know that she is able to help me you know, get where I need to be. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So a uh, shout out to you for, you know, seeking out a mentor. Because again, yeah. a lot of people, their egos are in the way and they don't understand that it can really help you. When it you it can. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really can. Yeah. So um, I also see that you are um, a music reviewer. Right. Oh, genius. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I was Tell a, me about that. I'm sorry. I do a lot. Um, I'm a, I was a we music. love it. We love <laughs> that. I was a genius music reviewer back in quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing reviews for music from Cardi B. I think it was um, Cardi B. It, it, it was so many other people in this. I'm, I'm mad because it can't come up right mm -hmm. now. But um, I was basically for also the DC chapter, so I was able to write music for for different reviewers, and mm -hmm. they will look at it. Most of my most of my reviews, they already launched by when I got them because I add a lot of detail, mm -hmm. and they encouraged me to not, you know, be fake about it. So of course right. I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna just write how I feel. Mm -hmm. Most of them were good reviews, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was fun for the time being as well. I hope to go back. They still support me to this day. I think I'm about to be on their page by any chance. Mm -hmm. They haven't reached back out to me yet, but um, I think I'm about to be on that mm -hmm. page. So they really do support me in everything that I do, and they congratulate me on all of my big ups and my wins and stuff mm -hmm. like that as well. So they're... that's super dope. Yes, it is super, super, super yes. dope. And there's nothing wrong. We love a woman, a female, okay? Y'all know. Who can multitask and have different streams of yes. everything, okay? Yes. So uh, what's, what's next for Monique Wilson? Let us know. What's next? What's next? <laughs> what we got to look forward to besides your podcast, the relaunch of that, because we're looking forward to that. I plan on doing music videos for my EP. Mm -hmm. I plan on performing more and more venues in my EP to get my name out there more. Mm -hmm. I may put out a single soon. That's one of Hush Hush Do. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much it, you okay. know? I may I may get back with Genius to start my music reviews again. Right. I may I may end up doing something else with a bunch of other people because mm -hmm. there's people from New York that's, that's hitting my line. There's people from New Jersey. There's people from all over who mm -hmm. wants to work with me so i just i guess i'm planning to make a better name for myself yeah and your ep it dropped this year yes, right yes. And what's the name of it understand me understand me yes and where can everyone stream it everyone can stream it on apple music spotify youtube iHeartRadio, pandora um was it 
Dre Dreezy, whatever it's called, <laughs> that too. Um, everywhere. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's everywhere. So you should be able to find Monique Wilson anywhere. Yes. Understand me, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, Monique, we thank you so much for coming and joining us on Unplugged DMV. No we look forward to everything you have coming, all your new music, your singles, thank and you. performances and things like that. Thank you. Okay. Right thank now, you. we're going to get into um, a live performance from Monique. Let us know what song you will be performing. I'll be performing Over You. Over is, You. Yes, ma'am. Mm, that sounds good. Everybody <laughs> tune in. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to another episode of Unplugged DMV.